Surrogates is basically a, a cyberpunk sci-fi story set in the year 2054, and a surrogate is an android representation of yourself that you send out into the world and you're linked to it virtually, so you experience everything it does, but you're not present. So it can smoke or drink or do any of those things and you get those sensations, but none of the harmful side effects. Or you can have one because you're a policeman or a fireman and you want to be able to do your job, but not have to really worry about the dangers of the job. Or you can have one because you want to look different, you know, older, younger, stronger, whatever you want. And it's sort of just a, a look at online culture the way it is today where people sort of create this persona for themselves that they maintain online, but at some point they have to surrender that to go out into the world to go to work and earn the money to keep the computer turned on or whatever. But in the future of the surrogates, everybody has this android that goes out into the world for them, so this persona that they create, they can sort of be that all the time. It's mostly a detective story, even in some ways more so than a sci-fi story. And it revolves around a, a Detective Greer who works for the police department in Atlanta. And he's investigating a series of crimes where there's a figure out there who's destroying surrogates. And attacks on surrogates are kind of rare because all of the people that are sort of opposed to surrogate technology live outside the city in a reservation. And they kind of have their own lives where they live as their real selves. But everybody in the city is sort of okay with surrogate culture. And so now these attacks start happening. It's the detective's job to sort of find out what's going on behind those attacks. And he's, you know, sort of a, an older cop, more of a veteran in his 50s. He has a surrogate for the more practical reasons of wanting to be safe on the job. Whereas his partner is a more younger cop. And he has his surrogate sort of to look more cool and tough and whatever have you. So he has his more for like vanity reasons. But the main detective story, when he goes home, he gets out of his surrogate and he's just his normal self. But his wife, Margaret, which is a major underpinning of the story, she will only act, interact with, with the detective as her surrogate, even in the home. She stays in her room all the time and will only leave the room as a surrogate to interact with him because she's uncomfortable with growing older. And so this sort of, where he has his for a practical reason, he goes home to his wife, she has hers, for this different reason and it's sort of a strain on their marriage and so you know the story is a lot about the mystery aspect of you know what's going on with the crime but even more so it's about how the technology is affecting this detective on a more personal level and the effects it's having on society on a more person-to-person -person level. I was in grad school and I took a, a course called Literature of the Internet and one of the books that we read uh, was a story a guy had written where he had gone and spent time with a lot of online gamers. And uh, this, the book was written in like the 90s. I want to say the game was EverQuest, but I'm not positive. I don't even think it was a graphics-oriented game. I think it was like a, a text-based game, you know? And a lot of the characters in the book, you know, they would so identify with this character they created for the game that they would lose their jobs, they would get divorced or things like that. It just sort of made me think about, you know, what is it about this sort of basic human desire to want to be something other than ourselves? You know, no matter who it is, we always want to be something different. We want to look different or different jobs or, or whatever have you. And so it was sort of that idea that, that sparked the whole story for me. And I just wanted to sort of create that idealized future where you could be whatever version of yourself you wanted to be and just look at what society would be like at that point. There's a guy named Max Handelman who is a, a producer. He's got a production house called Brownstone Productions with his wife, Elizabeth Banks, who's an actress. Um, you know, she plays Betty uh, in, um, in the Spider-Man movies. And uh, she's also in Seabiscuit and 40-Year-Old uh, Virgin. She's done a lot of work. And so, um, you know, he contacted me directly. He had read a, a review of the book, one of the earlier issues online, and just emailed me direct and asked me if the film rights were still available. And we talked to him and you know he was just a real real cool guy we wanted to work with him and he ended up taking the project uh to some friends of his uh, at mandeville films which they have their first look deal at disney and so uh max and his friends at mandeville brought it to disney and uh you know disney liked the idea and they just wanted to to take it from there so never really went out to the other studios you know after that mandeville just took it to the one place and uh things have you know gone pretty quickly on it. They've already got their cast together. They're filming it right now in Boston. 
Uh, the, the release date is set for November 20th, 2009. So uh, it's moving forward, you know, really quickly. And uh, I just got really lucky with that. Yeah, I've uh, finished a prequel to The Surrogates, which will be out in July of next year. It's called Surrogates Flesh and Bone. It sort of shows you the society 15 years prior to the current storyline. So like Harvey's wife comes home with her surrogate for the first time and you see what that's like. Uh, the prophet who's sort of the main villain of the original story, you know, you see he's starting out his church and what that's all about. And so it kind of shows you the growing pains of this future society as the technology is just getting introduced. You know, how are they dealing with that and, and what's happening. Um, so that'll be out in July next year. I've written another graphic novel called The Homeland Directive, which is more of a modern day political medical story. That'll be out in uh, July of 2010. And other than that, I'm just starting to do some intro work for Marvel. I did a story for Marvel Comics Presents, and I'm doing some filling work here and there. And in a lot of ways, I'm just like any other guy. I'm just out there starting out my career and, you know, just trying to get work.